Well, hey guys, I'm here at a new Target. Well, not new to me, but I don't think I've filmed in this one too, too much, but they recently restructured things around. So I'm gonna head on in and check out the new skincare. It's a new month. I like to do these videos monthly. If you are new here, make sure you are subscribed. If you like skincare content from a dermatologist, hit the bell notification. It lets you know when my videos go live. I typically do these videos in Target once a month. I also go to other stores and check out new skincare like Walmart. Recently went to Sephora, so lots of fun. Target is turning into a mall. We've got Ulta and CVS. Some of you guys have told me about this. Ooh, some of my favorites prominently displayed here. It's as though they knew I was coming. These sunscreens, I've been really impressed with. It's just a good everyday moisturizer. It's a chemical sunscreen, there's no cast. Some people have commented though, that it does end up burning their eyes. Same thing with the oil control one. The oil control one, however, is a good option for those with oily skin. It um, has minerals in it that help to absorb some excess oiliness from the surface of the skin, help, helping to minimize the shine. Wow, we have Peter Thomas Roth here and the infamous water drench hyaluronic acid serum, 75% hyaluronic acid complex. He's got issues with his hyaluronic acid complex. Hyaluronic acid, as you guys know, it's a humectant. It's primarily located in the dermis, just as part of your skin, but you also have a fair amount of it in the epidermis. But in a skincare product, the way it works is it targets the stratum corneum, the top protective layer, to help hydrate it up. It kind of pulls water into that layer. And the end result is by improving hydration, it helps ultimately improve uh, barrier turnover, reducing dryness, and it kind of plumps up the skin cells, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. Some people find that hyaluronic acid products irritate their skin, but otherwise it's very well tolerated. People ask about it drying out the skin if you live in a dry climate. In theory it can, but products like this have occlusive ingredients to kind of trap the moisture in, like dimethicone. But for the love of all things, do not pay $72 for a hyaluronic acid serum. That is pretty pricey. What's this? Potency Power Serum. THD Ascorbate. That's one of those stable, stabilized forms of vitamin C. Um, not very well studied in comparison to ascorbic acid, but tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate. It's not as well studied as ascorbic acid, but I think it's easier. It's easier to work with from a formulation standpoint. This has ferulic acid in it. Now that can be irritating in the skin, but it is an antioxidant. It helps reduce uh, sun damage. This also has sodium hyaluronate. And we have the Ordinary down here. Some of my favorites. This is a great product to put on in the morning prior to sunscreen because caffeine and EGCG, those are antioxidants, may help reduce oxidative stress. Upon exposure to environmental stressors in addition to UV, like pollution, which is a big problem and is associated with accelerated onset of the visible signs of skin aging. So caffeine, caffeine can also kind of calm down redness. This has glutathione in it too, which may help uh, with hyperpigmentation. And it has uh, epigallocatechan gallate, which comes from green tea, otherwise known as EGCG. Interestingly, there was a recent paper that came out showing EGCG, or applied topically, or at least green tea extract, um, helped to reduce the onset of radiation dermatitis in people undergoing radiation therapy for cancer treatment. See, $7.50 for a hyaluronic acid serum. Um, so if you want to use hyaluronic acid, this one by The Ordinary is pretty good. They have a lot of it here. Seems to be the main product they have. Oh, the Buffet. This is their peptide serum. It's one of my favorites, too. Peptides, they help act as humectants, hydrating up the stratum corneum, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. But some of them, in theory, may help to repair damage. They may help promote healing and minimize hyperpigmentation. But a lot of the research on peptides is industry-based and kind of like mm, needs improvement. But a moisturizer here for sensitive skin with squalane and emollient. Licorice root, which is good for redness and hyperpigmentation. Ever since that tinted sunscreen of theirs kept like precipitating out and 
people would ask them about it on social media and they wouldn't directly address the issue. I've always, I've had a pause. I don't know. Is it just me? I kind of feel like this brand has kind of gone downhill a bit. They had this oat, they had this hydrating oat toner, which was definitely a favorite. Really, really good. But some someone told me in the comments, I think, that they changed it up and it's not as good, which disappoints me because that was a product where I was like, whatever, whatever. And then I started using it and I was taken aback. Oh, look, Little Miss Let's Cheat Our Reviews came out with a sun screen SPF 30 that's that's some shade that I'm throwing there in case you were wondering it's so much shade that that it's reducing free radicals and DNA damage zinc oxide and turmeric blue light defense where is the blue light defense Sunday 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 this is a hybrid sunscreen this product it's claiming to have blue light defense. Um, now, blue light from the sun definitely plays a role in hyperpigmentation and likely plays a role in skin aging, we've come to learn. But the only ingredients in sunscreens that definitively have been shown to protect against those are going to be iron oxides and the chemical UV filter triazorb, which is not approved for use in sunscreens in the US. So this has neither of those. Uh, it's a hybrid sunscreen. It has some plant extracts, xanthophils, antioxidants, but Sunday doesn't have to show that those actually um, get into the skin and scavenge free radicals. So they could be duds, in other words. It just surprises me that you can like cheat the system and people continue to buy your products. Like, I don't get it. Autocorrect, brightening and depuffing eye contour cream. This one even has a detonator on it. Oh look, a scented eye cream um, is even more likely to cause problems for people in an eye cream because the skin there is so thin. You'll notice most, most eye creams are free of fragrance. I have heard people raving about, where is it at? I'm really liking this Target Ulta situation because there's a lot more products and there's no overhead music. Anyways, I've heard people raving about the pink drink on the interwebs. It has EGCG in it, which is the anti- I'm covering up the wind guard, hopefully I'm not muffling the sound. It has EGCG in it, Epigallocatechan gallate, that comes from green tea. And that's helpful for oxidative stress. It also has yeast ferment, Saccharomyces ferment filtrate, and honey extract. That's going to be very moisturizing. Peptides, again, humectants, which may or may not like do magic in the skin. Firming resurfacing essence is $48. Um, let me know if you've tried it. Here's the CEO 15% vitamin C serum. Sweet orange peel oil. This one again has tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. That's a stable form of vitamin C that is probably easier to work with but isn't as, evi isn't as evidence based as ascorbic acid. One note about linalool, that's a fragrance compound and it's vulnerable to oxidation. You get these uh, hydroperoxides that are more likely to cause sensitization they're more sensitizing than linalool itself. Peter Thomas Ross water drench cream is a good <clears throat> expensive moisturizer. Um, I, I actually like this quite a bit. It doesn't have fragrance. It's got like, again, Saccharomyces ferment filtrate, hyaluronic acid, and it also has ceramides. Good stuff for the moisture bearer. I have not tried the Peter Thomas Roth water drench SPF 45 hyaluronic cloud moisturizer with SPF 45. This is a chemical sunscreen. It should not leave a cast. The ingredients I'm intrigued by, ceramide. Hmm, has anyone tried this? I might have to get this and give it a go. Um, $52. I feel as though this is popular. The Shiseido Urban Environment. I feel like this gets hyped up a lot. This is a 
hybrid sunscreen, the cast should be moderate in that case. In my experience, that's generally the case. Looks like it's probably tinted. It has iron oxides in it. Licorice, this, this compound, glycerizate, that's a good, that's good if you have uh, rosacea prone skin and or hyperpigmentation. It's anti-inflammatory. Sodium hyaluronate, humectant again. It looks like it's a, it's got SD alcohol in it too. It's probably very uh, quick dry, non-greasy. Allows for comfortable wear. Doesn't make you feel overheated, I'm willing to guess. Spirulina, that's, if my nails ever look dirty as a side note, it's because I have spirulina stuck under my nails. I love putting it in my smoothies, but it makes a mess, but that's in there. Have you guys tried this? It actually looks promising. How much is it? $35 for, oh wait, it's $48 for the 50 ounce and $35 for the 30 ounce. What's this one? <laughs> In this little zippy bag. This is how the Japanese sunscreens that you buy on Yes Style come. Ultimate Sun Protector Lotion. This is a chemical sunscreen. It shouldn't leave a cast but it may sting your eyes. This looks promising too. 80 minutes, water resistant. Check out this jumbo size one, 150 mLs, $49. Wet force and heat force, turns invisible. Probably is a creamy consistency maybe. Does this have, oh this has talc. <laughs> People, talc is more than fine. It's more than safe. It's it's more than safe. I cover the data on talc and the fear mongering behind it in a video, which I will link down below or put in a floating eye in the, the, the cards here. But yeah, talc is more than fine. It helps if you've got oily skin, kind of absorb some of the oil. What else does this have? Uh, oh, isododecane. I like that. It, um, is a moisturizing ingredient often in sunscreens. Okay, I'm surprised. Shiseido is looking like they've got some good sunscreens here. Pure Retinol Express Smoothing Eye Mask in just 15 minutes. These have fragrance in them, which again, as I pointed out, fragrance in eye products more likely to be problematic. Plus under occlusion, that's definitely an environment there for irritation. I know a lot of people don't have problems with fragrance, but a lot of people do. So when I point it out, I'm not fear mongering because it is a true adverse effect of an ingredient. It's not a made up one or one that somebody is over hyping because they put 10 pounds of it in a mouse model and the mouse surprise got a tumor so that must translate to human use that's clean beauty fear mongering tactic 101 right there but yeah here we are over by origin speaking of fragrance they typically put fragrance in all of their products but this product checks and balances polishing face scrub frothy face wash Cold Classic. Now, kaolin helps absorb oiliness. Bergamot fruit oil, that can be, that's fragrance right there, bergamot. And it can actually cause a phytophotodermatitis, but my understanding is that the compound, the furocoumarin in the bergamot oil, which is what causes a phytophotodermatitis, my understanding is they filter that out or get rid of it. And, skincare products, which is good. <laughs> Phytophotodermatitis is basically, you develop a rash. See, certain plants have what are called furocoumarins. Celery does, citrus fruits. So if you put them on the skin, and then you're exposed to sunlight, UV rays from the sun, triggers a reaction in the skin that leads to a bad dermatitis. Most commonly seen like people enjoying margaritas at the beach with lime, some lime juice goes on the skin and causes a bad rash. Ah, this is one of my favorite cleansing balm products. The Carolyn Hirons Pixie Double Cleanse. This is really good. Um, I like it because it has like a cream cleanser on one side and a nice cleansing balm on the other, so you can do a double cleanse. I wonder, uh, 1.7 ounces, could we take this on a plane? Um, could we take this on a plane? I always have trouble with like dealing with my double cleanse for travel. Like I haven't quite finessed that. The best I've come up with is aliquoting the Aven 
intense Diaben Tolerance um, Extremely Gentle Cleansing Lotion as a first step and do a little thing, but yeah, I haven't come up with like a good strategy for traveling a double, cl a double cleanse on the go. Because like the oil cleansers, they might break down those reusable silicone and plastic containers. Um, and they rarely ever have them in like a... They rarely ever have these products in like small travel sizes. Anyways, we were over here by Pixie because I saw this. Vitamin C Remedy Mask Brightening Toning Jelly. Oh, it's backlit. Sorry about that. Brightening Toning Jelly. And it comes with... Now, that right there, why don't all brands that provide spatulas do this? Because the spatula thing... Y'all know, I, I obviously try out a lot of products for this channel. And at any given moment, those spatulas, they're like all over my bathroom. I'm like, how is this any more hygienic than me just putting my clean hand in the pod. <laughs> um, this is a scented mask with citrus oils, which can be even more irritating. It's also got caffeine. Again, we talked about that earlier. Anti-inflammatory. Helpful to temporarily improve redness. And it may also temporarily improve dark under eye circles. You get a lot of mask in that product, though. $24 for that big tub. Like, let's be honest. Masks are one of those things that... Does anybody ever... Do you, like, you have to really like this mask to justify having 10 ounces of it. Even if it's not necessarily an insanely priced tub. $24. I don't know. I guess that's not too bad. But, like, you're going to get bored of this. I'm telling you. You're going to get bored of this. Don't buy something like that because no one's going to be you do a mask maybe what once twice a week like you're going to have this tub sitting around thank god they clipped in the spatula otherwise that thing would be driving you crazy trust me what's this hydrating milky makeup remover with coconut probiotics i might have to give that a try sometime since i've taken to wearing more eye makeup lately <laughs> Just experimenting around for fun. Hmm, Hero Cosmetics. Highly recommend the Mighty Patch if you pick your acne. The nose one's really cool as well. Covers the entire nose if you get breakouts on the nose and I'm picking. I love this too, the Force Shield. It's uh, got a green tint to it, which kind of helps with redness, just kind of camouflage it. Their lightning wand is like a spot treatment for helping hyperpigmentation. It's got tranexamic acid in it. Tranexamic acid, niacinamide. Both of those are good for hyperpigmentation. The lightning swipe though, it looks like they put probably the same, same stuff into a pad. Now if you start using something like that at the first sign of a pimple and continue to use it through the lifespan of the pimple and then a few weeks after, it will reduce the chances that it heals with hyperpigmentation, provided this type of product is not too irritating for you. I've tried this out before and it's really good. The Rescue Balm, the color correcting one. This is like something that you could use if you have post acne redness as a um, kind of spot moisturizer to reduce irritation to the redness and help camouflage it because it's very similar to their post-blemish recovery cream, the Rescue Balm. This is good. It's got beta-glucan and peptides. It just kind of helps hydrate the healing skin and reduce irritation and friction. These are both pretty good. Wow, this is so cool to have all of this in Target now. I am pretty excited about this because one of the reasons I rarely ever film in either Ulta or Sephora is because they blast the music. And Target is notorious for not playing music. That's why I film here so much. And now they've given me even more to work with. Ugh, I'm excited. Get excited for more content in the store, you guys, in the future. Um, especially now that I've gotten into playing around with makeup. This this could get weird, you guys. This could get weird in a good way. Um, I feel like I'm just taking you guys on a tour. Do y'all, comment below, does your local Target have Ulta like this?
we have our faux tan. I always hear this getting hyped up on social media, and I don't know if it's one of those things where people are just being paid to hype it up or if it's actually as good as they claim it is. But if you're new here, um, sunless tanners, they are more than safe. They have dihydroxyacetone in them. It just re reacts with the proteins on that top protective layer, the stratum corneum, which ultimately gets exfoliated. That's why sunless tanners don't last indefinitely. Anyways, uh, it just reacts with those to, um, it's called the Maillard reaction. Great melanoidins. <laughs> Let's get dorky here. Um, but DHA and sunless tanners actually has been shown to protect, uh, to offer some protection against long wave UVA. So in theory, when used in conjunction with sunscreen, because again, it doesn't protect against the whole spectrum of UV, it's not a substitute, but when used in conjunction with sunscreen, it may actually be anti-aging. And we have a lot of new stuff. We don't have anything new from Elf in the realm of skincare. I reviewed this line for you guys a while ago, and I'm currently finishing up this, but I bailed on this, and I think I need to finish this. Uh, so check out that review if you're interested in that. I, I like the Happy Hydration Cream. It's quite good. And the uh, All the Feels Facial Oil. If you have flaky skin, a little spot drop of that is good to help soften the flakes without irritating the skin. Come on. Wow, I was not expecting that. Honestly, going in there, I knew they were doing renovations, but it didn't dawn on me that they were getting the Ulta in store. I had heard from you guys that a lot of Targets were getting them, but I just assumed that they were just moving stuff around. Because you know Target likes Target likes to keep you guessing as to where stuff is so that you wander around and buy more than you intended to go. I mean, that's how that's the Target business model. Like, I think that's the whole premise behind even the name. Like, like, like we're just... Have you ever seen a bug zapper? That's how it is shopping in Target. Like like a moth to a glow. Zzz, zzz, spend more money. <laughs> Anyways, that Ulta in there, I'm pretty excited for because it was well stocked with a lot of brands that normally I would have to go to Sephora for. And as I was explaining in there, filming in either Sephora or Ulta is really challenging because they're, first of all, the employees are very hands-on in those stores, which I know is their job. Like, I totally don't. You know, I'm not, I'm not dissing the employees for doing their job, but it makes it challenging, you know, to go around filming. And it's often crowded, and the music is always, and it makes it even more difficult for YouTube because of the audio. But that Target silence, silence is golden. Because, yeah, I honestly, as a matter of fact, man, I'm going on a tangent here. I don't know why stores even play music. Because unless it's kind of just peaceful background music, most people are not like going into a store to rave. Do people even rave anymore? They don't. Um, but yeah, I know why they do it because I think I've heard that when the music is like energetic and lively, you're more inclined to spend. Man, anyways, I'm going on a tangent. This video is done um, in terms of the shop with me portion. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the little mini intro to our new selection at my local Target. Let me know in the comments though if you have gotten hooked up in your Target with the Ulta because man, I was impressed. Anyways, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.